I probably study 10 to 15 hours a week and I try to get myself as prepared as possible for like the assignment coming up. So, I mean, I spend a good amount of time studying. Depending on the week, I'll study upwards of 15 hours. Probably 15 to 20 hours, I guess. I mean, it dip changes a lot depending on like what kind of what kind of things I have to do. feel like I kind of need to pave the way for the rest of like my generation because I'm, I'm one of the older ones. I think ones. that there's a certain level of expectation like, oh, you should not be failing classes. I, mean, I feel my parents want me to do well. To graduate and I have to do this and I have to be at this great my point professional now. goals I feel like I do put more pressure on myself maybe than necessary sometimes but I feel like that's you need to constantly be de pushing yourself like that um, otherwise you kind of start slacking on myself to do well because you know I still need to keep that GPA high Prescription drug abuse is an issue for college students and on this campus. I think it's a sizable issue. It's one that is, I think nationally, is becoming more of an issue. It's it's certainly growing. The prevalence for students using prescription ID drugs, I would say that anecdotally, when I've asked students, they've said, or a number of them have said, 90% of my friends have tried it at least once. I don't know anyone who hasn't tried it, those kinds of things. We do a survey called the National College Health Assessment every two years and about 30 percent of students say that in the prior year they had used uh, prescriptions prescription stimulants without a prescription at least once if they don't have a prescription it's illegal and can come with pretty serious consequences i was introduced to it my freshman year that was before i was prescribed and especially with like the younger students like the underclassmen from what i've seen like living in the dorms and everything i would say at least half the population like has used them at some point i've always noticed um even as a child like all through elementary school to high school i've had a really hard time focusing and like the pressure that i have to real on myself to really perform the best of my ability and i know that the study drugs that i used even before i was prescribed really would help kind of boost that and put me more at the top as opposed to like being mediocre. Yeah, I was writing a paper for English One and it was on Romeo and Juliet, which the text I'm super familiar with, like I've read it at least three times before then, but um, I want to say that that was my first like big paper of college and I just wanted to make sure that I was kind of, the performance of it was like up to par with the rest of my classmates. Like I didn't want it to seem, you know, obvious that I guess I didn't belong or that I came from a public school. Okay, so my roommate, her boyfriend, um, was diagnosed with ADD and I had seen him take Adderall before and um, I've seen kind of the effects it's had on him and he's been like a really good student. He was in my English class. He talks about, oh yeah, I got a really good grade on this, blah, blah, blah. And like, I was like, geez, how? Like nobody else did well. And he's like, well, I mean, I take you know, medication for it. And so that's how I was kind of introduced to it. And I was like, hey, I want to try that before I have to write this paper. Yeah, I definitely thought that it would give me kind of an unfair advantage, but I didn't care. Like, I just wanted to perform well. argument with regard to it's not a moral issue, it's not cheating, it's really just a way to um, get a leg up because other people are doing it. One of the ideas I think about is, well, where does it stop? It's always gonna be something that somebody else has a leg up on. And I've had people argue, well, people with ADHD, that's not fair, they get it, how come the rest of us can't? One reaction I have is, well, it's like somebody who has bad eyesight and needs eyeglasses to be able to see. That's really leveling the playing field for people who aren't able to do things to be able to be have the same opportunities as somebody who already has that. Um, 
So I think that it's, in a lot of ways, I look at it very similar to steroid use in athletics. It's, it's not fair and it's not leveling any playing field if somebody's abusing study drugs. And then I think the health issues are definitely, can be very significant. Issues that come with misuse and abuse. So uh, anything related to anxiety, paranoia, sleeplessness, not eating, fast heart rate, cardiac problems, seizures. These again, they get worse the more someone uses, the more chronically someone uses. Once or twice, people are not gonna have an addiction problem. But even one time, since people, if they've never used it before, don't know how they're gonna to react to it, the dosage might be a lot different than if they were prescribed it, what a doctor might prescribe for them. And so some students will report having really extreme reactions that are pretty terrifying or dangerous. One of my friends, I would describe him as a complete spaz. Well, he thought that he would have a high tolerance for it, for whatever reason, I have no idea but decided to take um, two of the 30 milligram quick release, which you just do not do. And he could not sit in his chair, was running around the room, like t it really freaked us all out. We were really concerned and then all of a sudden he had like stopped and sat down and he was just shaking. He like was, you know, moving in and out of his chair and um, he like passed out and we took him to the hospital and they told him that he it was he was lucky that he made it into the hospital because he could have like gone into cardiac arrest the potential for addiction or even abuse is can be pretty significant because some of it's not just the physiological consequences but even the psychological consequences even in terms of the idea of I need this to be able to study for finals, to stay awake, to be able to stay on task. And a lot of students may have an idea of this is only because I'm in college, once I'm done with college, then I won't need it anymore. They may go into grad school and then the same problem happens. And depending on what field someone goes into, finals week can be a typical work week. <laughs> and so the challenge is at what point is someone going to be able to stop using it if that's what they feel like they become dependent on? Whether or not they truly are, there's a big psychological component feeling like I need this to be able to do well. The ways in which the university can be more helpful and also students as a whole they are working on prevention and education so that students are aware of the different challenges that come up with it, ways to work on time management, alternatives, so it's not the only avenue. And then I think um, being able to let students know that not everybody's using it. Your body, your body reacts to it in a positive way, like, why would you stop? I'm afraid of the person that I would be without it. I'm afraid of my potential. I, I'm afraid that I'll lose all of my drive and determination if I decide to stop taking my medication because I think that that's, I mean, that my personality is, you know, generated by that. So I'm definitely concerned about my future.